The coronavirus has now claimed more than 76,000 lives here in the U.S. Despite the president early on insisting to anyone who would listen that he had it all under control. We have to get our country open, Jeff. Can you say, sir, what metrics you will use to make that decision? Uh, the metrics right here. That's my metrics. That's all I can do. Worries about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're we have it totally under control. It's one person. We think we have it very well under control. By April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. When it gets warm, uh, historically, that has been able to kill the virus. That's around the corner, so that will be a great thing. The numbers are going to get progressively better as we go along. If you go back six months or. Three months ago, nobody would have ever predicted. When you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero, uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. You know, I don't think it's inevitable. I don't think it's inevitable. They say, oh, he should do more. There's nothing more you can do. We haven't seen an increase, and people are getting better. Almost everybody that we see is getting better. And it could be everybody, too. The Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. They can't even count their votes in Iowa. They tried the impeachment hoax, and this is their new hoax. But, you know, we did something that's been pretty amazing. We have 15 people in this massive country. The press is in hysteria mode. CNN, fake news, and the camera just went off. Unfortunately, one person passed away overnight. Since the early stages of the foreign outbreak, my administration has taken the most aggressive action in modern history that really turned out to be a, a, a lifesaver in a sense a big lifesaver and some people will have this at a very light level and won't even go to a doctor or a hospital they'll get better anybody that needs a test gets a test we, they're there they have the test and the tests are beautiful the tests are all perfect the transcription was perfect and we're doing a great job with it and it will go away because of what i did and what the administration did with china we have 32 deaths at this point. Other countries that are smaller countries have many, many deaths. It's a very contagious virus. It's uh, incredible. But it's something that we have uh, tremendous control of. Are you talking about the virus? No, that's not under control for any place in the world. I think I read. I think I read. No, I didn't. I was talking about what we're doing is under control. But I'm not talking about the virus. I've always known this is a, this is a real this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. We had very great approval numbers. I mean, people like the job that we're doing. But, uh, the only thing we weren't prepared for was the uh, the media. The media has not treated it fairly. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Right. I think it's a very nasty question. I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens. John, you're okay. A month ago, the CDC had an initial test that failed. At that moment, late February, you said it's perfect, and it, and it wasn't perfect. Well, what I said in late February, what I said is perfect was my conversation with the head of the Ukraine. That's what I really said is perfect. Okay, that was another old scandal, nonsense, a total, you know, witch hunt. But nobody ever expected a thing like this. We got to get back to work, and I think we can start by opening up certain parts of the country. On Easter, we probably think, well, that could be a peak. That could be a peak period. That could be the peak, sadly to say, that could be the peak number of deaths before it starts coming down. That this is going to be gone. It'll be gone. Hopefully gone for a long time. What do you have to lose? I'll say it again. What do you have to lose? Take it. I really think they should take it. Hydroxychloroquine. Try it. If you'd like. Did anybody in this room think a thing like this could happen? But it happened. They don't have to appreciate me at all. I don't care about me. I wish you'd ask the question differently. Why don't you say it's gotten off to a tremendous start, but there are some little glitches, which, by the way, have been worked out. I wish we had a fair media in this country, and we really don't. Speaking of unfair, go ahead. We have to get our country open, Jeff. You say, sir, what metrics you will use to make that decision? Uh, the metrics right here. That's my metrics. That's all I can do. There's always a risk. This is, a, this is genius that we're fighting. You know, we're fighting this hidden enemy, which is genius, okay? It's genius. The way it's attacked so many countries. All I'm saying is this. How do you close down the greatest economy in the history of the world when on January 17th you have no cases, 
and no death. When on January 21st, you have one case and no death. One case. Think of that. What we inherited from the previous administration was totally broken. We inherited broken testing. Now we have great testing. Like today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization. I was angry because it should have been told to us. It should have been told to us early. It should have been told to us a lot sooner. People knew it was happening, and people didn't want to talk about it. The head of a country doesn't have to say, stay in. These people are smart people. Nobody ever thought this could have happened, a thing like this. We inherited a lot of garbage. We took, uh, they had tests that were no good. They had, all the stuff was no good. Okay, it might not come back at all, Jeff. It may not come back at all. We will have coronavirus in the fall. I am convinced of that. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with, but it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. I'm not a doctor, but I'm like a person that has a good, you know what. There may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. And in order for us to deal with that effectively, we have to put in place an infrastructure not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu, like the Spanish flu, crops up five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. It is a smart investment for us to make. It's not just insurance. It is knowing that down the road we're going to continue to have problems like this, particularly in a globalized world, where you move from one side of the world to the other in a day. So this is important now, but it's also important for our future and our children's future and our grandchildren's future. I cannot think of a better example of an area where we should all agree than passing this emergency funding to fight Ebola and to set up some of the public health infrastructure that we need to deal with potential outbreaks in the future. that goes away in April with the heat as the heat comes in. Uh, typically that will go away in April. At this moment we think we have it very much in hand. Dr. Fauci said earlier this week that the lag in testing was in fact a failing. Do you take responsibility for that? Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. You said that you don't take responsibility, but you did disband the White House pandemic office and the officials that were working in that office left this administration abruptly. So what responsibility do you take to that? And the officials that worked in that office said that you that the White House lost valuable time because that office wasn't disbanded. What do you make of that? Well, I just think it's a nasty question because what we've done is, uh, and Tony has said numerous times that uh, we've saved thousands of lives because of the quick closing. Uh, and when you say me, I didn't do it. Uh, we have a group of people. I could, I could ask perhaps my administration, but I could perhaps ask uh, Tony about that because I, I don't know anything about.